Welcome to No Match for a Blaster, a Star Wars role-playing podcast, Season 2, Episode 24, They Come in Pairs. I'm your host of this fully operational podcast, Peter Davis. If you're new here, No Match for a Blaster is an actual play podcast featuring the Morality Plays crew playing the Star Wars role-playing system by Fantasy Flight Games. And now it is time to thank our Nerf Herd of the Week, Kelly Carell, and our Blaster Herd of the Week, Chris Canfield. At this level, our patrons get access to our exclusive Patreon feed to listen to our episodes days early. Plus, Kelly will get to name her very own NPC on our show. Thank you, patrons. To be our next Blasterhead or Nerf Herd of the Week, be sure to subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash moralityplays. Do you like free stickers? Of course you do! To get a free one, leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook at No Match for Blaster, or tweet us at morality underscore plays. If we read your message on the show, we'll send you one. This offer valid only while supplies last. So, keep your grenade belt handy, because we're returning to the crew of the Atheon as they're fighting for their lives against Bastless War Droids. Open. Moff Spozax, Intelligence Log. In the hangar of the Mandalorian research base on Nalados, the only machines in operation are a malfunctioning Jedi ship with a rare and valuable part. The Atheon's medical droid feigning system failure and a basilisk war droid bent on eliminating the intruders. In order to complete their mission, the crew of the Atheon must find a way to neutralize or escape the attacking machine without leaving their own droid behind. Close. Intelligence log. It just slowly, you know, collapses. On to S4. On to S4. <laughs> like the whirling maw of guns slow down and it stops just an, just just a centimeter in front of S4's face. Plate. Face plate. All right. I believe it is. Is it my turn? No. Sorry. Okay. It is S4M's turn. It's S, S, S4M. Would you like to do something? <laughs> um. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> um, calculating. Recalculating, yes. Recalculating. This uh, this is really a silly idea. There's oh. no way I can reach Great, up it. into the weapon systems and try to fire them off, is there? So, let me see what weapon systems are left. Because the droid is dead, it's not necessarily that it's yeah. destroyed completely. So the wave, ca- the, the, the pulse wave cannon was dead is, to start is off with. Out of commission, with. right? The concussion missiles are reloading, and the light laser cannons were shot by Remy. So it has one weapon system that was active, and that was the claws. Oh, well, I don't want to activate those right now. Oh, uh, no, no, it's dead. So I, it's not like I can slice it. Um. I was going to try to slice into its communication system, but I I think I'm going to lay here pressed to the ground. Um, what? So you specialize in cybernetics, right? Right. Not not right. specifically droid mechanics, right? Correct. I I could try to do several things that I consider very silly, and I wouldn't let me do if I were running. But <laughs> try me, because you have a force point. Try me. Um. Hmm. Uh, let's see, what are some of the things I wanted to try? Yeah, I, I wanted to try slicing in, into its communication network and try to change all of us on its identify friend or foe frequency to friend. Uh, but it's out of commission now. Hmm. Um, I would let you do that. I'd let you jack into its subsystem. You can spend strain to op- to at least update, like... like I, could, I could power and pack up by on. spending strain. <laughs> Can you pow- can you spend strain to power on like a specific it, no, system? No, I, I, I can. I and then can, have oh, that well, communicated to the other droids. I could. I could other... certainly try that. Um, yeah, 
like what, what I, I'm thinking here specifically is that I want to spend I'll I'll spend a point of strain to power on its its communication system, yep. and I'm trying to slice into its network, try to see how many other droids there are, mm-hmm. and whether or not I can slice and take control of them. Like I don't think I could do both of those things in this turn. We'll see. Let's, but, so give me give me okay. So you're on the ground. You get your mm-hmm. right arm from under you. You pull out your USB cord, you slam it into the into the chest of the bear crawfish, and mm-hmm. give me a slice. Ing roll. Difficulty. Uh, that's a very good question. Three at least, huh? Um, no, no I'm gonna say it's it's two, but one's a red. No one okay. gets this okay. close to these things. Uh, one purple and one red, or two purple and one. Uh, red? One red, one purple. One red, one purple. Okay. Um, oh, and I'll I'll take a point of. Are you using your? Are are you using your internal systems to hack? Uh, I don't see how I could use the other slicing kit. Then a black die. Okay, that's fair. Like I just don't see how I could yeah. possibly be using it at the moment. What with being stuck under the thing. Uh, computers is too yellow, too green. All right, here we go. Yep. <laughs> oh. A wash. Wow, that's a lot of dice to get a wash on. Woo. I tried. Wow. Nah, it's just too damaged. Well, no, so you get in and you're able to see some information. You're not able to oh, do okay. anything all that helpful. But you, you still get in. <clears throat> Apparently, they weren't expecting this. I mean, so you, what you're able to see is because what you were going for was to adjust targeting protocols, right? You realize there are there there's there are no targeting protocols. <laughs> they have been deleted except for one thing, which is you know <laughs> exterminate, <laughs> kill all meat bags. Do not uh. allow contamination to leave this facility. Mm-hmm. But there's no friend or foe. Um, Designation. Every, everything's been turned to foe. Yep. Okay. Well, that's not reassuring, but at least I'm in. Good news and bad news, everybody. <laughs> Good news. I'm not dead. Oh yes, uh, as for him, will actually say something at this point. Oh okay. Uh, he he will he will talk on the comms. So the good news is that I have hacked into their databanks on their communications network. The bad news is everything is considered an enemy, and I'm stuck under a basilisk war droid. So, Remy, you're in the Starfighter, right? Yep. One engine blaring. As you look into, don't argue with me, the side view mirror of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the Starfighter. And, you and it see, says objects and, and mirror are closer than they appear? But in Mandalorian, so it looks real uh, He doesn't read it. Yeah. Right, okay. um, so, But you see at the end of the hangar that the other Bastos war droid has turned to to y'all because there's a starfighter with an engine powering on and it just shot some big weapon sized guns and you can see the uh, lights big turn- weapon sized guns huh? <laughs> it's big weapon sized guns mm. yep. <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> and it does take f- flight it, it looks real silly it, it dangles the crawfish part behind it but it's moving down the hangar doesn't get to you yet but it is moving towards y'all. Okay. And not on the uh, ground. We have incoming. And I'm going to try and shoot it. With what? With what? I'm going to get out of the fighter and okay. shoot it That's with a slingshot. Saying. Are you going to let it just... It's gonna, are, you, are you taking the key out? No, I guess no, it has to spin. No. That was the problem with the last one. So it's just going to spin in place. You're going to jump out of it while it's spinning in place? No! God! I'm going to fire up the other engine. I'm going to fly this thing. As well, as much as I can. So right now, okay. Uh, okay. You're going to try to balance out the side. You said it would be an easier thruster. piloting check, and then I could shoot at the other one. Or, and then I could I could just, you know. Yeah. yeah. So only one engine is going now. Yep. I'm going to do a piloting check to see if I can get the other one going. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to shoot at it with the, with the weapons on this ship. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so last time it was two black and two purple. Two purple. 
So it's going to be one purple now. Because really, you've you figured out which side the engine buttons are. You're just going to push the one on the other side. But it's still Mandalorian, and it's old. One advantage. Okay. So what I'm thinking is is that the ship was turning to face the, the one that's on top of S4. And you saw it through the side view mirror, so it's roughly behind you. So you're still oh, able... Oh, it's behind me. Yeah, that's why you so... saw it in the side view mirror. Because they see things oh, right. Yeah. So what you are able to do is you let it Well, I mean, go. I need it to turn around then. Yeah, yeah. So you can let it continue to spin. So there's, like... You got a failure, but a failure to do it is still would let it naturally spin. So on your next turn, the ship can be oriented down the down the hangarway towards the other Basilisk droids. Okay. <clears throat> Um, you could, you, I mean, it would make sense to use that to aim, but you can use it to do something else. What's that? No, it's up to you. It's a, you have one advantage. Uh, I'm just going to pass a blue die on. Okay. Peace uh, how far is the other droid? Extreme other for you. Basilic? Extreme, Extreme for you right now. Yeah. Mm. And it would probably take more than one movement to get even to long range, huh? But it's 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 moving towards y'all. But yeah, I'll um, I might move towards another bit of cover towards it and like duck down. So I'll just I'll have a movement turn. Okay, yeah, you can you can essentially get to like the the like you can take cover behind like the diplomat move from cover to cover. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, you're not that far away from like well, you're about you know one you're one. Uh, Let's say you're you cut the the difference, so you're about one movement away from the ship the Remy's in doing these donuts. S four. Oh lord, um, <laughs> that's never that's not a good thing you want to hear Joy say. <laughs> so you know how I used to have companions. Uh, it's a funny story. Ah, so if I'm still in, I would like to continue to slice and see if I can determine how many droids are still active. How many of these basilisks are, are active? Sure. You can do that. <sighs> if I'm still in. Um, so what's the difficulty on this? Same. Same? Yeah. One black, one purple, and one red? Yep. Alrighty. Two Righty. successes and an advantage. Slice a D, slice, slice, slice. You find out that whenever uh, the Mandalorians designate these into pods, they mean it's essentially pairs. So there's two in each pod. Oh, um, and you see that they almost always migrate together. Like their orders, they stay connected. They they almost use the same kind of. Yeah. Do they operate in pairs? Um, yes, but they're not. They're, they're, they still have individual sen- like <laughs> droid sentience. I, I understand that, but yeah. they they operate like fighter yes. pilots. There's yes. there's a wingman. Yeah. There's always a wingman. Yeah. So as right. one goes into like normally when one would do. It's long range. The other one would go into support with melee and stuff like that. Okay. That way you couldn't kite them. Right. Uh, so there are four other ones that I'm noticing on the system? You believe there should be. Oh, great. Captain, I have further bad news. It appears that each of these pods contain a pair of Basilisk war droids. So there are at least four more. Four more Where? I'm working on that, Captain. All right. The Basil's war droid moves up at a vehicle speed, blah. He moves closer to you. He essentially cut the distance between you and it in half. So to Remy, on, you know, in the ship, it counts as short. And for Kamaya as a person, counts as long. Okay. Because those, those aren't, you know what I mean? They're not the same thing. Um, and it's going to fire a weapon. At the fighter. Oh, okay. It is going to fire its pulse wave cannon at the fighter. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, and it has linked, apparently. So. Mm-hmm. What is this, 40k? Yep. Uh, no, you... Oh, gosh. It would be terrible if it was... Uh, and it opens up with its heavy bolter cannons. <laughs> it's, it's twin heavy bolter cannons. All right, so I have two green, one yellow, and then two purple. Boop. Two successes. 
Okay. All right. So that's going to do docka 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 onto your ship. At least ship. he can't activate the linked weapons. He does not. Yeah. You needed two advantages. To you do need that. advantages. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it does five ship damage to the fighter. The fighter is like you. Warning lights are going off. It is not in a happy place. Okay. No system failures yet, but this is just a fighter, and and it was already banged up when you jumped into it. So, uh, if you did a close approximation, you'd say that it may not survive another one of those. Okay. Yeah. Also, it's probably telling you that in Mandalorian. Yeah. But, you know. Also, <laughs> don't forget if you're in a smaller ship and you take a crit, there's a chance. No, no, no. It's it gave it silhouette at three. Okay, it can't blow up. <laughs> Whenever you crit a like a Tie Fighter. They just explode. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But you're not a TIE fighter. You're not made out of balsa wood and gasoline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> PCs. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to spend another uh, point. And activate another vessel spore droid. Uh, you see large chunks of Duracrete fall at the end of the uh, of the um, the hangar, and you might see whirring up of lights in a mall way down there. Captain, I think I found at least one more of them. Chris, I'm on it. Um, okay. Um, so this thing is coming right directly at me. Yes. Yes. Um. How far is the elevator? Like super. How many movements? Four. So if you were to use strain, two. So if you double move twice, you get there in two. Mm-hmm. So I was assuming like this thing had like a, like the door was kind of in the back of the ship. Oh, like to the it. side. Huh? Like to the side. Well, just in the back. Like, sure. Basically, here's what I want to do. Yeah. Here's what I want to do. I want to punch it and jump out the ship. So you want to like you want to push you want to hold down you want to, you want to tape down the fire button, or do you want to like engage the engine? I want to engage the engine and jump out the ship. Okay. Yeah, he's trying to suicide ram the ship, but without the suicide. <laughs> so you're part, gonna right? John McClane the ship. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I want to fire the engines, fire the thrusters mm-hmm. directly at the war droid and jump out. As the, uh, you know, kind of dramatically as the fighter smashes into, or well, before, technically before, I want to jump out before it smashes into the war droid. So the war droid is flying a bit. It's like, it's it's hovering about 15, 20 feet in the air. And your ship okay. is on the ground, grinding. Okay. But you can have it go that direction. So you're saying I can't do that? Is that what you're saying? You can. Well, it might not hit it. You might, it, it. Yeah. But also, it's going towards the fighter, and if you can get out of the fighter and it not see you leave, it's going to assume the target would still be the ship. whole lot of if on this, <laughs> coming off mm-hmm. this plan. Yeah, hearing a whole lot of if <laughs> off this plan. Yeah. So, really easy piloting, just one purple. And then I probably want a stealth to just make sure. That... I have a new plan. Okay. New plan. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. I also happen to have thermal detonators. Thermal detonators in my inventory, as uh-huh. well as some ion grenades. I have thermal answers to the. <laughs> just apply answer, and it works. Um. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the course for this ship to, you know, make its way towards the Basilisk droid and set this thermal detonator on a timer and jump out the ship. Okay. That's what I want to do. All right. Hopefully timing it. This seems really... Wily Coyote, but you know what? Yes, it's yeah. it's, it's it. very Star Warsy. It's very action sequency. Yeah. Um. Yep. So a few yep. a few rolls. Easy piloting first off. That's one green, right? One uh, one purple. It's one purple. one purple. I hope you have more than one green in piloting. I do. Have okay, more good. Than one green. 
Two successes, one advantage. You reach into your trench coat and you pull out your Duracrete brick and you jam it under the the, the, the gas pedal. The the star throttle. The star throttle. <laughs> the Mandalorian ships are weird. They have they have gas levers and whatever. You jam it under there and it starts to rumble and scratch and move forward. It looks like it's 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 you know. Aside from the elevation thing, it's going right in the right direction. So then you're going to have your thermal detonator, you're going to put it on the dashboard, essentially, right? And you're going to try and... Yep. So you're setting a timer, right? Yep. Demolitions, moderate difficulty. Where is that? I thought that was a skill, but I don't see that. It was demolition. Um, no, it's like a using... weapon attacks, isn't it? Yeah, using grenades is usually ranged light, so... I don't know what you what? would do instead. Demolitions yeah. isn't a thing? No. Uh, you are correct. It is ranged light. For grenades. Let's just throw them. So I think this might be a mechanics then. Mm. <laughs> I, to, I, uh, I mean... Chuck, chuck it in the... Uh, throw, throw the grenade into the, the cockpit as you jump back. <laughs> right. I mean, that would literally be faster. I mean, easier. Yeah, but, but the, you wouldn't be able to control the timing. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, I could wait. <laughs> Thermal detonators do have like an activation trigger. Huh? Like a remote trigger? <laughs> yeah, they have they have a remote trigger. Oh well, then I'll just do the remote trigger. Okay. Well, I thought you wanted to be cool. All right. John McClane doesn't use a remote trigger. Well, he didn't have that option. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't fighting Basilisk war droids either. I don't know. Have you seen the new one? I have not. They've, they've jumped the crawfish bear shark. <laughs> okay, so, then I, then so I, what, what, what kind of role is that going to be? Well, since you're just going to use the trigger, I'm just gonna, timing issue? I'm just going to need the stealth. Give me the stealth check to essentially see if it notices that the pilot of the ship... Because it can't see... It can only see your glove, effectively. So it's going to be a pretty... Easy check. Okay, which I get a blue with. Yeah. Uh, easy is one yep. purple. Yeah. And my stealth is three green. That's four successes and another advantage. You're fine. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't notice the glove at all. You're able to perch up in a place. So you, you kind of move off to the side a little bit. That way you can see the two objects as they get as close as possible. And you're sitting there ready with your finger right above the button. The distance will help whenever it goes on its turn. It's going to close that distance. And so whenever I narrate what's going to happen as the Basilisk Wardroid comes in, you just tell me stop. And that's when you push the button. Okay? Okay. Okay. I guess I'll take that advantage. I'm going to take that advantage and recover a string. Okay. I don't remember. Okay. Have you two done stuff this round? I don't think so. No. Okay. Then it's you two. Um, did you? I don't remember. No, I think you've been I going first. There was nothing to kill, I guess. No, uh, did Bud, did you try and hack was that this turn? I honestly don't recall if that was this <laughs> turn or last turn. It's all uh, a go seamless. Ahead, take a turn. Yeah, I, I think they may be right. I don't think they went. Yeah, because I think this was the beginning of this round, and you were going first. Um, so, Kamai, do you do you want to shoot it first, just so it's more damage? So, hopefully, when it blows up, it's actually dead, dead. Yeah, I could try. Um, so, when if I move towards. The towards where the elevator is. Is that moving towards or away from it? Away. Away from it. Okay. I'm going to shoot it now. Okay. And then run towards the elevator. Yeah, I'm kind of um, kind of curious about that I mean, large weapon that lift. I left in there. Turbo lift. The turbo lift. So I have a very silly plan, but... Because uh... um, apparently these things are going to keep coming, and uh-huh. I might I, want I, a bigger I think, gun. I think the explosions are drawing it. Yeah. Drawing them. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot. shoot Ooh. It. Failure, three advantages, and a despair. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> oh, no. Bud's gone French. <laughs> <laughs> this is this has not been a good combat. <laughs> no. Oh, you could have gone way worse. You only had to pretend okay. that you got one-shotted. You could have gotten one-shotted. That's true. Um, 
Yeah, can I can I use I'm my I'm very pleased I managed to pull off that uh pretending to die though. That was that was the best plan I had. <laughs> yeah. It was good. I was not good. staying in that fight. Good plan. It was a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> um Let's see. Oh, I could also um I could also use two of those to perform a free maneuver. So, like, to Such get some distance opening without, the turbo lift? <laughs> without getting strain. Well, I can't get all the way there mm, oh. this turn. But I can, you know, do a double move without taking strain. So I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to recover a strain and take an, a free movement. And that's what I'm going to do with my advantages. And what happens with my... Uh, of my despair. So S four, you notice that um, that Kamaya, you, you notice the barrel and the the muzzle of her rifle again, and mm-hmm. it fires off like just a like you know da, 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 shots, right? Mm-hmm. And what you're noticing is that there's a heat bloom building up, like your sensors are able to p- pick up this sharp jump in heat that is is residing in the center part of the gun. Even when mm-hmm. she puts the gun back on her back and it should be mo- should be invisible to you again, you can't see the object, but you see the heat bloom sense the heat. with your sensor still. Ooh. And it's not dissipating very quickly. How's that for a that's despair? Scary. Is that good? Is it good? That's, that's, that's good despair. <laughs> that sounds like a despair. I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, and I take a double movement towards the lift. Okay, there's two more movements left to get there. Okay. Uh, Captain, or possibly Kamaya, I'm tracking a heat bloom running towards the turbo lifts. That's not me. Chris. <laughs> also, I have a very interesting plan. Please stand by. If we can just keep him on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> right. As long... You, oh, yes, hopefully the planet is not of strategic importance. We'll just abandon the planet and... We'll just exterminate us. Uh, what was it called? <laughs> yes, we'll exterminate us this planet. Back to 40k. Yeah. Uh, so, my plan is to try to... So, I'm still in their co- comms systems, right? Uh, uh, you're, in its, you're in its systems. You're in its, yeah. I'm in its systems. So, I would like to try to spoof the Basilisk war droids into thinking that the shutdown has been turned off. That's a tough like the lockdown. The lockdown has been turned off, and that they need to return to their power bay, the the, the little pods. Yeah, that's yeah. A like I said, this is a stupid plan. plan. Oh, all right. So, but it's the best one I could come up with, and I'm willing to spend one of our precious hero uh, force points on seeing if this might work. Okay, so your difficulty here is going to be all the difficulty. So, oh, okay, so it's going to be three purple, but one turns into a red. Mm-hmm. And you got some black dice. Now here's the thing: mm-hmm. you're you're still not using your hacking device. One black, right? right. Uh, it's it's banged up to crazy. Another black. I told you that like it was doing that weird screech thing. So it was sending everything on every single signal at the same time. That's mm-hmm. part of its communication systems. So it's in, it it is just like like just yeah. It is in a very 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 bad place. Another black die and. A fourth one is tough. I don't want to do this to you, but they literally removed sec- like parts of their code have been removed. So, so to prevent something like this from being done. <clears throat> well, it's weird. It's like like it's not just like they're using its own language to tell it to do something. Someone literally removed the target information away from it. So for it mm. to return to old protocols, you might be able to do it. But you're having to avoid gaps in code that you may or may not know if they're there or not. Oh, great. Yeah. So, you, it, yeah. It's a really, this is tough. I mean, you. I mean, if you do this. I'm not sure that I have enough dice to pull this off. If you could do this, this would negate a lot the of The whole things. fight. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be able to stop this whole fight. Whole okay, thing. so so currently I'm sitting on two green, two yellow versus two purple, a red, and four black dice. That is correct. I am open to arguments. <laughs> I argue that you are a meanie head and that you are bad. Um, Did you call me a smeg head? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, because Discord broke out for a moment, but I'm like, if you're doing a Red Dwarf reference, that's pretty good. You think of any advantages? They wouldn't expect this coming. <laughs> uh, they'll never see this one coming. Uh, uh, yeah, it's too stupid. There's right. no way they There's would no see There's no way it. somebody would get up close to a basilisk war droid and then... Okay. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um... Okay. Currently... There's only one Basilisk war droid active. Its targeting parameters are the ship. The ship is charging towards it. Mm-hmm. Now, this might actually work better after the, only, the Basilisks <laughs> are dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would like to retract this attempt. I, I think we should try something else. Do, do, we, have do we have a second? Oh, do, do we have a second? Do we have a second? Remy will say, I'm going to take care of the one directly ahead. You focus on the rest for the moment. Okay, can I jam their targeting systems? Can I use their use this this basilisk droid's communication systems to broadcast jamming? <coughs> that sounds good. Give it giving it disadvantage dice, basically. I would make that two black dice easier. Okay, so two black die, a purple die, and a red die. Two or two purple, purple and a red? And two a red. purple and a red. Versus my two green, two yellow. What advantages can I possibly pull out of S4M's chest cavity? Low, lower uh, than the chest cavity. Yeah, oh, okay. The rear docking his, port. His, <laughs> <laughs> the rear USB, the star yeah, USB yeah. port. A, um, no, it's a parallel port. You're old. Anybody got anything? <laughs> um, <laughs> nope. I think this is it. Uh, All right, well, I'm going to try this. One advantage. All I got was one advantage. <laughs> you can try again. I'll give you. A I believe I can threat. spin that to to recover a strain. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you a piece of information for it if you want the information. Okay, I'll take a piece of okay. information. So your original plan, thinking about all the protocols and everything, you remember. You remember. That in the control room that you could see over the thing, right? Mm-hmm. That there were bays of the computer systems that were just taken out. Yeah, they're, they're all ripped out. Yeah. So that so if you were to try something crazy like you were doing, we need those computers if, back. If in you place. had those computer bays and you had them reinstalled, that might be a little less crazy. It's something to consider. And that would make a little sense why they were missing protocols. Certain yes. protocols. Captain, my plan did not work. <laughs> All right, that's fine. All right. Just, uh... I'm not sure that it is. But <laughs> I appreciate your saying so, Captain. Good luck. <laughs> Just the... keep hitting and moving, people. Keep hitting and moving. The Basilisk War Droid goes into an arc coming towards the starfighter. It sinks its claws uh, into the cockpit and... And I blow the button. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you blow it. And... Wait Boom. for it. And... <laughs> now. Alright. Uh, so, roll me damage on the thermal detonator. Um, yeah, about that. Anybody know what they are? <laughs> uh, I, can, I know it's, it's a lot. my weapons. Let me see. Armor, explosive, thermal detonator is 20 damage. Oh, you don't roll it. Wow. Um, That's terrifying. Give me... That is terrifying. Uh, give me, give me, give me your ranged light. No difficulty. Just see if you get something crazy. <clears throat> No difficulty. Let me make sure everything's cleared. Ranged light. Two successes, three advantages. Okay, so that will activate. That'll activate your like the breach and vicious and blasts and stuff like that. All right. So you click the thermal detonator, and there's there's a brief. <laughs> you click the thermal detonator, and there's a brief moment where you're like, "What?" And then, boo! And you see this like massive fireball erupt around the edges of the cockpit 
and inside you see a swirling vortex of red hot and white heat as it explodes forth like it's a volcano erupting from the the upper side of the ship engulfing the basilisk war droid uh you see gosh you you see little pops come off little explosions that you assume is the rocket pods and you actually have to turn your head because you have the thermal detonator which is you know devastating and scary then the ship explodes itself because you did enough damage to the ship also and your, your vision's blotted out and you turn your head as this acrid plume of mushroom cloud of smoke rises up and to the ceiling and just billows out on a side effect all the little holes on the ceiling there's like some smoke there's 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 like foggy smoke up there so it's kind of hard to see Hmm. Yay! If you, yeah. Whoa, that was awesome, Remy. Thanks. Only uh, what? Three more to go. <laughs> Correct, Captain. No, that's only two. So you have four. Well, right? Oh well. <laughs> it's trying to get two not, for one. Not okay. correct, Captain. <laughs> not correct. Recalculating. Recalculating. <laughs> They're a base 12 system. It's real hard. So how many are there currently in this room? It's a base 12. Active There's 12 one. in the base. In the room, uh, we think there might still be one more? It sounded like there's one more about to drop down from the ceiling. Uh, it, yeah. 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 It's very far away, and there's a big thing of smoke between you and this. So it's a little obscured, but... Yep. But we don't know what that heat signature was, right? Or was that the thing? <laughs> That's Caballo. That was me. No. I was saying that I could see her heat signature from her weapon. Uh. And so presumably so could they. <gasps> PC's turn. You guys don't see what the Basil's wardroid way at the end of the whole thing does. Um... Let's see. Okay, you know so what? that's good enough. Like I'm, I'm obscuring the far side of the thing with with your, you know, action movie explosion. That's a point. I'm giving. I'm giving. I'm, I'm putting a piece of terrain in the room. There you go. All oh, right, we're nice up to three light side yeah. points. You cannot see down the far side of the thing. Uh, this is still okay. like the the uh, ambassador ship is still. Yeah, maybe you should do like another like. Okay, now what do we see after all that? Sure, okay. So, so Remy's behind some cover. Uh, Kamaya's- Essentially, I would think I'm basically almost in the middle of this long hangar-type room, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or pretty close to the middle. The explosion happens in, uh, in front of you. So the explosion happens down the hangar from you and the ambassador ship. So just uh, to the side of you is the, uh, the ship that you guys were goofing around with, with the... Glob space, the uh, yeah, the, with the prow, with the prow weapon, you're trying to capture. So you guys can still see that clearly, but there's this massive fireball engulfed ship, and this just acrid pillar of smoke coming off of it in the middle of the hangar. Um, there's the broken down, <laughs> uh, the 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 broken Basilisk war droid that is still. Showing dominance on top of uh, S4. He hasn't moved yet. And Kamaya is booking it back to the entrance of the hangar, back towards the turbo lifts. Okay. Are, um, are there more... Sh- I mean, this is like a hangar, so I'm assuming there are more than those two ships. Three uh, ships there were three. Every, all the other ones, you assume, have skadoodled. There were three. I just blew up one. Yep. Perfect. That leaves one, one more. By the initial droid. Damn it. All right. Looks like I'm out of ships. Any any plans for the, to deal with this other um, one? I got a big done I'm going to go get. Oh, I don't know what it does yet. The experimental weapon? <laughs> yeah. There's probably enough clearance in this room. Yeah. I take a double move. Okay. 
I get I should get to the elevator and be able to grab the weapon. So you get up you, you go up the cat you go up the stairs that'll get you up so to the, the lift. Yeah. Yeah, and well, so in the hangar, you get to the edge of the hangar, you go up the catwalky kind of stairs that go up to the entrance of the hangar and you're you get to the room because there was a so it goes elevator in a room and then a hallway so you're able to get into that room where the droids are with all the stuff okay they grab a large weapon okay what do you what do you do with the rest of your stuff well the um uh, the blaster rifle is on a weapon sling, so I can just swing sling it back around. It's uh, it's it's getting a little cumbersome, just so you know. Okay. Okay. Because because this weapon is at the max amount of cumbersome that you're allowed to have, right? Ah, uh, okay. I mean, you could trade out the you could leave leave your rifle on the on the loader droids and grab the big yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'll leave my rifle. Okay. It's not like we'll be fighting infantry. I hope. I'll drop the rifle and grab the. Giant gun. I'm gonna laugh if this thing turns out to be some sort of laser designator and all it does is paint the target so you can hit it with a real weapon. What? No. Spoilers. Spoilers. Yes, thank you. (laughs) PC slot number two. Oh, S4, why don't you go? Because I don't know. Can I crawl out from underneath this thing? Sure. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do then. And I'm going to start trying to make my way towards the turbo lift. Uh, do I? Am I still crippled? Do I still take a point of strain every time? Take I Take a move? point of strain every time you move. Good boy. All right, I'll take a point of strain to start moving towards the. Uh, you have three move increments lifter. left. In yeah. All right, I'm up to six. No, seven strain out of fourteen. <laughs> I'm at half strain. Um, are you going to uh, do anything I'll else? Move again. That's another point. Eight, eight points out of 14. Well, that's taking an extra maneuver. Are you going to take two strain to do the extra maneuver? Oh, I have to take an extra maneuver? I can't instead no, of like, you can, move you can convert your um, standard action, action into, into a, a maneuver. Move action? Well, I thought the climbing out was kind of... Oh, okay. Well, that's fair. Oh. Um, then, then, no, I won't I won't do that. I will, okay. I will just move my normal movement because I'm badly damaged. Yeah. Okay. But I'm still holding my battle axe. <laughs> <He's> t- <laughs> All right. Can I see the other? Word Negative. Word? Can, can I see S four? Yes. Can I get to S four? In this turn. If you double move. So what's around? What's directly around me right now? Uh, the just junk. The Anything? master ship Nothing? is near you. Um, um, the crumpled ship that it landed on at the fu- uh, start of the fight is near you. Uh, there are corpses. There are, yeah, the office worker kind of flight staff corpses. Yeah, but I can't see the other one because of the the plume. I'm going to assume it probably can't see me. Okay, as an incident, I'll holster my gun. Well, I mean, uh, they probably were holstered already, so I was flying and doing all that other stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to um, double move back to S4. If if I can end up in cover, I'll do that. All right. I believe it's my turn. You guys all did yes. stuff. That yeah. is, uh, mm-hmm. That is accurate. Something happens! I right. attempt to disbelief. Y'all's turn. Oh, great. Well, there's smoke obscuring. Right, right. Yeah. But they should be obscuring us, too. Well, yeah, yeah. Hypothetically. <laughs> Hypothetically. <clears throat> I'm glad we're <laughs> applying the uh, scientific process here. Hmm. All right. Um, I will I will take, I guess, two strain and move twice towards the turbo lift. Ouch. So you're going to take four strain? Well, no, I'll spend my standard action to move and my other action to move. Or do I only have to pay strain for one hole? But you're crippled. Right. That's why I was thinking... So it takes two strain. Two strain. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I'm now at a nine out of 14 strain, everybody. Does that mean I get to the turbo lift this turn, or...? Yeah, you can get to the lift. Oh, okay. I get to the lift, and I'm going to uh, sit down in the lift. (laughs) All right. You do notice... That the lift does not have power. 
Are we leaving? Because <laughs> we could be leaving. Um, I'm going to order the droids to dump some of their cargo and pick me up. Oh, they pour out, like, a lot of uh, Kurtosis Mandalorian plates, plate armor. Yeah. What about, what the about turbo, onto what about, the turbo lift floor, or are they pouring it outside the turbo I lift? I guess it's up to you. I, I'd like to just pour them inside the turbo lift. Inside the turbo lift, all right. Um, and next what, turn, I guess I will spend uh, time turning the turbo lift back on, but what, we'll see. What about the obsidian tablet? Uh, I'd like to keep that on the... I think the that's lo- fine. one of the loaders, if that's possible. I think they're full, though. I think you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I want them to dump enough plates that I can get on there, so right. they can move me, so I don't have to keep taking strain. <laughs> you have your own personal, like. I have my own personal, uh, yeah. Oh, you're getting um, a little piggyback ride. Um, I, I was thinking it was more like a. They're just going to carry me because they put their loader arms out in front of them. But like the they're, they're forklift bot droids, in right? Yeah, he's, he's right. hedonism bot. Yeah, he's, right. I'm he's, hedonism bot. His, exactly. His own like you know, and his arm is holding up Jombie. his head. Perhaps you and me and Jombi. an opera about a man loving a woman. Hmm. How delightful! I love hedonism bot. I really. I, he is yeah. great. He is great. Um. Well. My plan was to help S4, so... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had a plan to help myself. <laughs> uh, Kamai, why don't you go? And I'll In fairness, you do. can't lift S4. So. Wait, are we... Uh, if we're leaving, I'm not going back out there. We can... Oh. <laughs> you, you coming, Remy? You cool? I would prefer not to continue to engage them in such a wide open area where they can surround us. But that's my thought, Captain. Oh, I was saying we don't fight them anymore, but... Well, why don't you fire the weapon at something to see what it does? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, can I get back to the hangar and see anything? What do you mean, anything? I mean... There's no, a... there's no Basil's war droids. Okay, That's what I was. that's what I was looking okay. for. <laughs> Is there anything movie that isn't Remy? Uh, no. Smoke is technically moving. Technically, yes. Alright. The best kind anything. of correct. We'll fire it at something, Kamaya, just so we know what the weapon does. If I fire it, they'll see me. Right? <laughs> and I love <laughs> the conflict of like, what does it do? And the <laughs> and the in character, you know what? This is a terrible idea. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. But I also had a thought hmm. about the ceiling and needing to get this other thing out of there. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to fire it at the ceiling. Like I find a spot on the ceiling that has a few holes, kind of close by, mm-hmm. and I want to fire them. Fire it into the middle to see if I can get a bigger Make hole a bigger open. Hole. Now you're making a lot of yeah. assumptions about this gun. All right, sure, yeah, you can do that. I don't know what it does, but at the moment, I don't know anything else that I want to damage other than the ceiling. You pull That's up a, a gun. confetti cannon. <laughs> it's a t-shirt. It's a Mandalorian t-shirt cannon, which means it's still <laughs> it's still lethal. Sorry, it's still yeah. more lethal than a normal t-shirt cannon. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the t-shirts are wrapped in hard plastic, yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It just fires and this little picture of it says Boba Fett is the best, but best has two T's at the end of it. All right, so you shoulder the, the this. So this notice nobody laughed at that audience. Oh, I will edit it in. I'll edit it <laughs> You'll in. Edit in a laugh track. <laughs> I'll okay. edit in the laugh track. Oh you, yeah. All right. Dang it, bud! You actually listened to the show. All right, so you you shoulder. This boxy rifle-looking thing. This thing is, like, if you stood it up, goes, like, most of the way up your chest. Like, it is, and it's big and bulky. It looks like a Nerf gun from the 90s. It's just massive. You shoulder it, and you notice that there's, like, two options when you start kind of goofing with it a bit. It looks like it's, there's, a, there's, like, it tries to find a target, and you're, like, it's not locking on. So you're like, all right, so you just select for area. 
right? You're just mm-hmm. targeting the location. Right, okay. And uh, it says, all right, yeah, go for it. And you... <laughs> you re- Does it actually say that in Mandalorian? <laughs> this weapon is so chill. Oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, but, but she doesn't speak Mandalorian, so... Right, um, right, right. So, so you rack, like, you have this grip on the, on the underside of it, and you, you feel it release a little, and you rack it back and slam it forward like it's a massive shotgun. And all of a sudden, there's, there's no barrel is protruding from the, the front of this, by the way, as I think I told you. Okay. A, a, a little, little slot door opens in the top of the gun, down the mm-hmm. barrel, and with this eerie kind of click and cry this small drone-ish thing that looks like a like a missile with fins pops out of the top of it and climbs about 35 feet into the air mm-hmm. and then you, then you have to pull the trigger um okay I pull the trigger and it goes and it shoots laser bolts at your targeted location okay so I have a little drone thing, and the drone is shooting? Yeah. At the thing that I'm pointing at? Yeah. Okay, great. I assume it doesn't hurt no. the ceiling. <laughs> okay. No. It splatters it with bol- <laughs> bol- uh, blaster fire, though. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, now we know, Kamaya. Yeah, it made a little drone. I see that. Can you nail control that drone? Mm-hmm. Um, come back. It, it press the button. Like, <laughs> tries to get the drone to get back in the. So, so you have you have two you have two actions on this gun, the trigger and then this rack, like the like this slide. Yeah, um, I guess I I just guess I slide it. It's the the drone slowly starts hovering back down to the gun. It, it, it it's not immediate. Okay. Yeah, I slide it back, which, and which means you have to stand still for a moment. The drone back in. Yeah, I'm staying there. Okay. Putting the, putting the drone and out of the out. inky soot comes four basilisk war drones. Oh no! Ah, criff, 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 criff. Send it back out. Send it back out. No, it's ah, just come. landed. Is that everybody's turn? Is it my turn now? I didn't go yet. Okay, go for it. Um, well, since it looks like we might be leaving this room, I'm gonna, uh, I guess, uh, double move to the turbo lift. Okay, yep, you were able to get into that room. Do y'all think I should have left a thermal detonator here before I went? <laughs> or just go? I think just go. We'll yeah, just go. I, go. Think ju- I think just go. All right. On oh, my have- turn, much <laughs> like a scene from Terminator 2, dun 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 dun, through the, the, the fires that are still uh-huh. going off <laughs> from, the, from, from the ship thermal detonator, thermal detonator cocktail explosion. A basilisk war droid crawls through the fire and is now in view. Oh, is it um, hovering or is it walking? It's walking. Thermal detonator cocktail explosion is the name of uh, a Star Rooster's next album. <laughs> ah. <laughs> that sounds good. That's that's his that's his lounge album where he just does cover yeah. of other pop songs as a lounge singer. <laughs> but yeah, this is not the one that you blew up. By the way, <laughs> this is the one. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just wanted to make the one that landed while we were not able to see it. I assume. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, we're on the turbo lift. So. Well, not everybody's on the turbo lift. <laughs> Are we cheesing it? The, I, the I drone really like the turbo lift. comes down, and then you, you have to wait. So I'm going to take one of your maneuvers. One of one maneuver, okay. and it. It it slowly goes into the dock. Uh, you notice that it looks like there might be more in there than just the one. Ooh. There's a few of these guys. And the moment it is docked in enough, you're like, you slam it shut and you move. Yeah. Okay. So you can just Sounds get right. to the you can just get to the the, the lift. Cool. You get to the lift. Alright, let's cheese it. All right, then then the scene is of the entrance to the turbo lift from the hall looking in, mm-hmm. and S4M just reaches out a finger and presses the button and charges it at the same time. <laughs> and it just goes, Wah! and it, the turbo lift closes. <laughs> Thanks for listening. 
To make sure you don't miss any big updates, follow us on Facebook at No Match for Blaster or on Twitter at Morality underscore Plays. If you enjoyed our show, please leave us a review on iTunes and visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash moralityplays. No Match for Blaster is a podcast by Morality Plays. Star Wars, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Force and Destiny are made by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our theme is by Kevin McLeod. Sound effects by Tristan Logren, Vindus, and Akmov. And I'd like to thank my amazing players. Brandon playing Remy Drobash, Gerald playing S4M3L, and Bobby playing Kamiaceras. And of course I'd like to thank you, our listeners. And we'll see you again soon in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs>